This is Love Notes, daily devotions from Holy Trinity Lutheran Church. Grace and peace to you. Our text today is 1 Kings, the 17th chapter, verses 8 through 16. Uh, you can read on either side of this passage to get the story more fully. The woman that we will focus on today is unnamed. She is simply a widow, and she is from Zarephath, which is in Gentile territory outside the bounds of Israel. It involves the prophet Elijah. The background is that Ahab and Jezebel have come to the throne of Israel. Ahab is the Israelite, and Jezebel, the queen, is from the Gentiles. She is a worshiper, a devout worshiper of the god Baal, or Baal. It's a Canaanite god, and she works on her husband immediately to establish this as the new religion of Israel. Ahab and Jezebel devote themselves to eliminating the worship of Yahweh, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The prophet Elijah comes on the scene, a mighty prophet, the mightiest of prophets, some might argue. Elijah comes and condemns them and says that the Lord has promised at the beginning of chapter 17 that no rain will fall on the land until the Lord decides it's time. So a great drought falls on the land. It is partly to prove that God has the power over the rain and not Baal, who is a fertility god. It is to humiliate the royal couple for turning their back on the God who actually created the heavens and the earth. And that sets up Elijah's ministry as really a conflict between these two gods, between Yahweh and Baal. So when the drought falls, God provides for Elijah by sending him first to go and live by a little wadi, a creek, out in the middle of the wilderness. There's enough water that's still flowing from this spring that he has enough to keep him hydrated. And God sends ravens to him each and every day with food to eat. And so Elijah is sustained. It may not be much, but it's more than the people suffering through the famine have, and he survives. But when the wadi starts to dry up too, dry up too then God sends him new instructions. It says, the word of the Lord came to him saying, go now to Zarephath uh, in Phoenicia. It's a place that belongs to Sidon, a kingdom, and there they worship Baal everyone would have known. God says, live there, for I have commanded a widow there to feed you. So Elijah sets out and he finds the widow. He comes to the gate of a town. A widow was out gathering sticks. He calls to her and he says, bring me a little water and a vessel so that I may drink. This isn't a demand. It's not an order. Um, this is just common hospitality in the Old Testament. When a stranger or a traveler comes into town and there's a person that they meet, they ask for water. So she goes off to get him water because that's the way people lived. They offered hospitality. As she was going away, he says, hey, bring me a morsel of bread in your hand too, because I'm a little bit hungry, I guess. She says to him, as the Lord your God lives, she apparently knows of the God of Israel and knows that this is a prophet of the Lord. I have nothing baked, only a handful of meal in a jar and a little oil in a jug, which you can make a cake out of and you can bake. It isn't much, but it's something. And I'm now gathering up these little couple of sticks so I don't need much so that I can go home and prepare this last little bit of flour, this last little bit of oil, and that my son and I can eat it, and then we will die. She knows that the end is near. There is no more food left. The drought has come to the land. Elijah says to her, don't be afraid. And that's said more often than any other command in the entirety of Scripture. Do not be afraid. And it's usually the precursor to some promise that's about to be filled, some action that God is going to take. 
He says, go and do as you said. Take the little bit of cake or the wheat and the little bit of oil and make up a cake and bring me some of it. And afterward, then you can eat what's left for you and your son. And now here comes the promise. For thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, the jar of meal will not be emptied and the jug of oil will not fail until the day that the Lord sends rain upon the earth. So she went and she did as Elijah said. Why would you do that? Based on some foreigner who came and announced that the Lord would provide. This is an act of deep faith and trust. So she went and she did as Elijah said. So that she as well as he and her household ate for many days. Here we have to be reminded of all of the stories in Scripture where God does exactly the same thing. Think of the manna in the wilderness that came day after day after day. Uh, Think of the water from the rock that God provides. Uh, Think of the loaves and the fishes that Jesus provides with 12 baskets of leftovers. Uh, Think of the wedding at Cana where water is turned into wine in such abundance that no wedding party could ever finish it. Dealing with the God of abundance in the midst of scarce times connects us to a faith in a God who will provide for us. And the question that we always have to ask is, do I trust that word? Will I go and do as the Lord says, even though it may seem a little bit nuts? The jar kept being filled up. The oil kept being filled up and the bread kept coming because of the Lord who was providing for the widow and for Elijah. Now, if you read on, we find that at some point the son gets ill and he dies. And the widow is angry with Elijah. She says, We went through all this rigmarole, and now my son ends up dying anyway. What kind of prophet are you? And then Elijah takes the son, and he lays down upon him three times, and then he lifts him up, and the boy lives. He's risen from the dead. It is a story that fuels the Christian faith and the resurrection from the Old Testament. God provides, and the words do not be afraid should be a mantra that we call upon in every hour. This widow recognized that Elijah was from the Lord, and she dared to trust that the Lord would fulfill the promises Elijah was speaking. Our prayer today is that we have the courage and the faith of this widow, this unnamed widow, who lives outside the bounds of Israel. If she can be blessed by God, can you? Amen.